one of the most simple things on the planet. It's not complicated. Do what you're really passionate about. So I'm going to give you something really easy to remember. You ready? Write this down, please. S-U-V, four-wheel drive. <laughs> now you're going, what? This is marketing, Robbie. <laughs> SUV four wheel drive. Do you, does everyone know what that is? If you have a sports util, utility vehicle that has four wheel drive, where can you go? Anywhere you bloody want. Can you drive it on the road? Can you drive it on the beach? Can you drive it in the bush? Can you take it anywhere you bloody want, yes? So tonight's about if you find the thing that you're the most passionate about and you do it really well, where can you go? But you're going to need one of these to get there. So just remember that. that whenever you get a bit complicated with business, this is how simple it is. You just need an SUV four-wheel drive. All right, how does this work now? Are you ready? Most of you will know what this is. You've heard me talk about it before. It's over and over, some of you. Hundreds of times have you listened to Max Bites. But I can't understand the disconnect, so I'm going to get a, a little bit aggressive. You ready? And I'll use Marisa as an example. Marisa came to me hesitatingly <laughs> to share that she didn't want to be a fitness professional anymore thinking that I would find that to be offensive or something <laughs> and ask you a different question when somebody says to you what is that what is it that you do how do you explain what it is that you do and I'm going to use your example what can you not tell people what you do if, if you stand up and say I'm a lawyer do people get excited about that no. <laughs> What's the next worst thing after that? If you're at a party, you meet a lawyer and the next person is an, an accountant. <laughs> Public servant could probably do it too. How many of you want to, are you excited about meeting an accountant? Just say no, Robbie. Why? Because accountants are boring. boring. <laughs> now lawyers maybe not so boring, maybe dodgy comes to mind. <laughs> Tonight, you explain to people what it is that you do, which is help people create wealth and look after their, their, their lifestyle. So when people say to me, Rowie, is it, what is it that you do? Well, I don't tell people that I have a business college or a fitness college or I help people become exercise professionals. You ready? What do you do, Rowie? I help people have a career that they love and not a job that they don't. Uber driver says, what do you do? I say, I help people have a career that they love and not a job that they don't. Guess what every Uber driver always says to me next? Can you help me too? <laughs> Because most people have a job that they don't like and they would really like to have a career that they love. So when Marisa comes to me and says, I'm really not that passionate about helping people to be healthy, fit and strong. I'm really passionate about feeding cows. That blows my mind with excitement. Because most people don't live their lives doing what they're absolutely passionate about. So this is the disconnect that I have. S stands for sweet spot, doesn't it, Andrew? And those of you who are unaware of what your sweet spot is, please draw it because it's really... I'll see if I can... No, I'm just going to draw it here. You ready? One, two, three. Draw the three circles. I know that you've done it before, but maybe tonight will be the night that you actually really get it. First circle. Put a little love heart in there. We've already discussed what that means. Love what you do. Don't do some lousy, stinking, rotten job to, lay, to pay your lousy, stinking, rotten bills. Do something that you're really excited about, that you're passionate about, that you wake up in the morning and you go, wow, I'm really excited about doing this. Uh, right next to that, on your notes, I will do it for free. If they stopped paying me, I would still go. I would do it for free. That's how much I love it. When you love something that much, guess how easy it is to market your business? She loves her business so much, she'd do it for free. Then people want to do business with you. <laughs> Because you're so excited about it. So number one is you've got to love what you do. Now, if you're really passionate about what you do and you're really excited about it, um, and I did this with a bunch of chiropractors just recently, turn to the person next to you and whatever it is that you do, just say, I am the second best. Whatever it is that you do. I am the second best. Does it make you feel a bit sick? I'm the second best lawyer on the Gold Coast. Are you serious? I'm the second best exercise professional in Clayfield. Really? I'm the second best provider of union shop of awesome experiences. Nobody wants to be the second best, do you? Just say no, Rowie. See, when you're doing what you're really passionate about, what do you want to be? You want to be the best. Please say yes. Now, if you're going to be 
the best at something? How much training do you do? How much education do you do? Where do you find yourself on a Monday, Friday evening instead of in front of the television or Facebooking or at the bar getting drunk? What are you doing? Hanging out with us. Because <laughs> when you want to be the best at something, the training isn't hard, the education isn't hard. People say to me, oh, it's really hard. No, only if you're not passionate about it. If you love it, the training's really easy, yes or no. And when you do the training, guess what you become? Now, I use this example all the time, and I don't know if you know about basketball, but this is my favourite example for this. A guy called Kobe Bryant, if you've never heard of him, at least Google him and find out a little bit about Kobe Bryant. So he was told in high school that he wasn't particularly good at basketball, he was okay. Now, if somebody said to you, you were okay at something, but you're really passionate about it, how would that make you feel? You're okay. <laughs> so he analysed his own game. Not the coach told him what he had to do. He analysed his own game and realised his own weaknesses. He wasn't good at shooting and he wasn't good at rebounding and he wasn't good at defending. He actually wasn't very good at anything. So guess what he did? Trained his ass off. Now he started with, because when you shoot hoops at basketball, that's pretty good, yeah? You earn a fair bit of money and you can shoot, shoot hoops. So 2,000 a day. How many? 2,000. Now I don't even like basketball, but I reckon if I shot 2,000 hoops every day, I'd get bloody good at it. But I don't want to do it. Guess what he was really passionate about? Basketball. Guess what he became? Now, this is where it becomes really exciting. Put some dollar signs in this circle, please. Most people think, oh, I'm going to make a stack of money. The only way you ever make a stack of money is if you're doing what you're passionate about, you're the best in the world at it, and then you will add massive value to other people's lives. Does that make sense? Yes. Please say yes. 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 I don't understand what the disconnect here is. A lot of people do something for the money. They're not passionate about it, and then they hate the training, they hate going to work. Now, the sweet spot is when you live in here. You're doing what you're the most passionate about, you become the best in the world at it, and you add massive value to people's lives. Now, someone like Kobe Bryant, they pay him a lot of money, or did pay him a lot of money to play basketball, yes or no? Yes. Now, what, what is the only reason, because you hear people say this about sport, oh, they, that he earns all the money. Now, some of you don't know any other, I know about three basketball players in the world. Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and maybe LeBron, how's that? Now, how many basketball players are there in the world? Thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands, and I know three of them. Because they add massive value to somebody's life, and Kobe Bryant to me, because I study excellence, and that guy is a classic example of excellence. All I'm asking you to do is, if you want to have a vehicle that's going to take you through your life, a business that you can market without even having to think about it, you have to live in your sweet spot. What does that stand for? You have to do what you love, you have to be the best in the world at it, and you have to add massive value to people's lives. If your business is adding massive value to people's lives, will you make money? But will you enjoy it if you're not passionate about it? And will you do the training to become the best in the world at it? So it all just downward spirals after that. Does that make sense? So what does that stand for? Live in your sweet spot. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, U stands for, because this is about marketing, there are some universal laws of marketing. What does U stand for? Universal. <laughs> and we seem to get, I don't know how this happens, I didn't go to university, you can actually do a degree in marketing. The reason I know this is because too many of my MAP students have done a degree in marketing at university, and what I'm about to share with you, they don't know. They didn't get taught at university, and I don't understand this because to me, with no education at all past year nine, if you don't understand the universal laws of marketing, how can you market your business? Why would you pay thousands of dollars to go to university to get a marketing degree and not learn the universal laws of marketing? This is crazy. Please say yes. yes. <laughs> so do you want to know what the universal laws of marketing are? Yes. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to start with this. I like acronyms. I think you'll find this out. W-I-F-M. Law of marketing. <laughs> universal. What's in it for me? Now, here's some of the challenges. If you see a, if you see a sign on a building, and let's just think about this, because we, we go through, this happens to us every day. You see a sign on a building, it's a big sign, they would have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on that sign. If you said to yourself, I wonder what they do there? Yes or no? Yes. 
there's nothing in it for you to read a sign because you don't even know what they do there. Does that make sense? So whatever you do to attract people into your business because you're the most passionate about it, one of the universal laws of marketing is that your target market has to say what's in it for me to keep reading your website, your Instagram, your Facebook, your brochure, your letter, your there has to be a reason for me to keep reading. Would that be fair? So whenever you put a piece of marketing together, you get excited about your business, there has to be a reason for people to want to talk to you. So let's go back to the, we won't leave the lawyers alone, we'll go with the accountant. <laughs> if you tell somebody that you're an accountant, what will most people do? Nice, thanks, lovely to meet you and move on. Yes, because with accountant, go, say it again. Boring. Okay, so if you're an accountant and you're at a social event like this and somebody says, what is it that you do? And you say, well, their income, decrease their taxes, and retire wealthy really early. What would you say to yourself? Come on, Mitch, what would you say if you met somebody like that? Like you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you help me do that? I want to increase my income, decrease my taxes, retire early, and have a stack of money, yes or no? Yes. So now I've got a reason what's in it for me to keep talking to you. You've given me the bloody reason, yes or no? Yes. So I will use my profession. I'm a personal trainer. Please don't say that, Mervyn, ever. <laughs> because are there people that have had a really bad experience with a personal trainer? Just say yes. <laughs> are there people who think that personal trainers are, are unintelligent people who chew on their hat on backwards and arrive late? Yes or no? <laughs> so if you are a personal trainer, don't call yourself one, please. You're an exercise professional. There's a reason for that because the medical professionals are now using that as normal terminology. You're an exercise professional, yes? What does that first of all say that you do? You obviously exercise. And what does professional mean? Kobe Bryant is a professional basketballer. What does that mean? You get paid for it. There's a good place to start, yeah? And then if you add things like arrive on time, dress professionally, have professional standards, yes or no? Yes. yes. Just say yes, that's really cool. So what I'm asking you to do if you are an exercise professional is be an exercise professional, but don't bloody call yourself one. What do you do for people? Somebody says to you, how are you today? Go back to this universal law of marketing. What are you going to say? How are you today? How do you think I am? One of my clients hasn't fitted into her black jeans for six months. Today she's screwed into them. I'm having a fantastic day. How about you? Come on! <laughs> now when you go through the checkout at the supermarket, you go to the petrol station, you go to the coffee shop, somebody says, how are you? How many times a day does somebody say to you, how are you? Blair, how many times? And if you say, fine, thanks, how are you? Is there any reason for the person to keep talking to you? Just say no. <laughs> If you say, how do you think I am? One of my clients who had coronary heart disease now has zero coronary heart disease. But I'm having a fantastic day. How about you? Whatever business you're in, and Marie said, we'll use it cows because I just love that whole concept. How are you today? How do you think I am? I fed 5,000 cows today with Hunter Hay. <laughs> it's exciting, isn't it? Rather than I'm in the hay business. <laughs> If you're excited about your business, which is why you have to live in the sweet spot, because it's just really hard to do if somebody gives you a script because it's part of the business, it's not what you're passionate about. So how are you today? Oh, how do you think I am? I hope somebody have a career that they love and not a lousy sinking job that they don't. Pretty cool. Now if somebody says, what is it that you do, which you probably won't have to tell them after that because they'll know what it is that you do. But if somebody, if you forgot the first bit, the second bit is, so what, what is it that you do? What is it that you do? You said it beautifully tonight, I couldn't put it more perfectly. What is it that you do? Um, I protect uh, wealth multi-generationally, look after people's estates, um, work in trusts, which is trust. And, um... You're going to work on that too now, aren't you? <laughs> what I'm asking you all to do is come up with, when somebody says to you, how are you today? Don't just say, not too bad, fine, thank you, like everybody else does. And those of you who are even better, you know, the Olympia guys and the people who have got the passion about what they do, Arma probably doesn't say not too bad. Just say, I'm fantastic. I'm amazing. But it still doesn't market your business, does it? You have to tell people what it is that you do. Universal law of marketing. What's in it for me to listen to you talk? Do you like that? Thank you. Okay. 
The next one, universal law of marketing, A, I, D, A. I don't know why they don't teach this in university. When the first time I saw this, I peed my pants. Obviously, I peed my pants a lot. I'm over 50. <laughs> but I was well under 50 when I learned this for the very first time because I was writing brochures and putting ads in the newspaper and marketing business. I've been running health clubs since I was 18 years of age. I had no clue what that meant. Now, I'm sure that you do you've done the MAX program, but let's just do a quick reminder about what that actually means. When you put a Facebook post, when you put an Instagram post, when you put a, a website up, when you do anything with your business, you have to stick to this universal law of marketing. You ready? Number one, you have to get people's attention. Now please write down these three things. Yasmin will tell you these because she's heard these about 75,000 times now. When somebody reads a headline on your web, we'll just use websites for example, people Google you now, they don't go to the yellow pages and they don't go to the newspaper, they will Google you because somebody said try this business perhaps. When they read whatever it is that you've got on your website, you have to get their attention. And here's the three things I have to say, please write them down. Every time you put something onto it anywhere that describes your business, somebody has to say these three things. You ready? Oh my God, that's me. And if you don't believe in God, put, oh my gosh, that's me. <laughs> oh my God, that's me. Number two, oh my God, they can help me. Not only are they talking directly to me, but they can help me. I'm going to go backwards a bit. There's three universal laws of business. Should we do those before marketing? <laughs> There's only three things that you need to be successful in business. You like that, how simple that is? Number one, find a problem. Write it down. But your business will be successful if you find a problem. Number two, provide the solution. Big go. Number three, provide a wow experience. That wraps up business beautifully. Do you like that? Yes. Thank you, I'm amazing. <laughs> now that's it, that's probably four years of a business degree in, in three short sentences. Find a problem, find a solution, provide a wow experience. Most businesses don't do that. They yeah, there's plenty of problems. And I use our the fitness profession. Are there plenty of problems? Coronary heart disease, type 2 diabetes, osteoporosis, depression, stroke, cancer. Depression, stroke, cancer, depression, stroke, cancer, depression, anxiety, depression. Do we have some challenges? Massive killer diseases. Do we have problems? Do we have the solution, Jason? Absolutely. To every single one of those, apart from the fact that brain-derived neurotropic factors will make you feel better so you actually want to do some more exercise. But if people are exercising paramic, there's no ambulance picking them up for coronary heart disease, type 2 diabetes, osteoporosis, depression, because all of those things are completely preventable and curable by exercise and healthy eating. Just say, yes, Robbie, isn't that exciting? Yes. Come on! <laughs> so we've got the solution, haven't we? Our profession, fitness professionals in the room, now here's this small challenge though. Not so much of a wow experience for most people. Exercise. 10% of the Western world has some involvement in an exercise program. Now, that might sound real positive to you, but and I'm a real positive person, but what does that also mean? 90% of people don't want to exercise. Now, the World Health Organization has happily shared that 40% of those people are actively looking not to exercise. They actually don't want to do it. Don't talk to me. You're a Mormon, go. You're a Jehovah's Witness, go. I'm not interested in what you've got to sell. And yet it's the number one product for coronary heart disease, type 2 diabetes, osteoporosis, depression, cancer, stroke, all the big killer diseases, and our, our profession's got the answer, and nobody wants to do it. Why? Because we haven't done the third part of business, which is? The wow experience. The wow experience. Now let me put it even more simple than that. How do you find out what makes people say wow? This is the biggest part of marketing that people just seem to forget. Bloody ask them. <laughs> And I'll use some really simple things. What kind of music do you like to listen to? So when people come to your class or your facility or your law office, have their music playing, not yours. What do you like to drink? What do you like to 
Read. You know, you don't put magazines on the table about cars if the, if the people that are coming into your facility that day like rock climbing. You just don't do that. Ask people what do you like to read, what do you like to listen to. That's just all a part of what's in it for me to come into your business. Might be something simple as the toilets are clean. Every other gym I've been to, the toilets have been filled, and this one's really clean. Hello, Rose. Oh, well, amazing, well, far out people. There's a look at there's a little chair for you in the corner. <laughs> excited as me about all this stuff because it's actually really simple yeah? yeah so let's go back to Aida get people's attention which means they have to look at it and say that's me they can help me or they can help number three somebody in my life so if you are helping people with cerebral palsy or some kind of mental challenge this person reading what you're putting out there might not have that mental challenge but their next door neighbor has or their best friend has somebody in their family with it so when they read your marketing, you're just going to say, oh my God, they can't help me, but my friend's had an eating disorder and Yasmin can help her get through that eating disorder. Easy? So the attention thing's pretty easy. They can help me. Oh my God, that's me. They can help me. Or they can help somebody in my family. So every time you put something out there, and I always have a joke about this because the big thing now is Instagram and Facebook. And I'll roll with it. I hear this every day. I'll be throwing advertising on Instagram and Facebook. It's completely different. And the rules are with A that don't apply anymore. So here's my ass or my abs. Here's my photo of my abs, and that's on Instagram today. This might work. Yeah, you got my attention because <laughs> you've got ripped abdominals. Well, what's in it for me? I don't know anymore because usually it's just a photo of ripped abdominals. Now, that might be exciting for some people, but let's put some more stuff in there if that's going to be your target market, which is the third universal law of marketing, which is who is your target market? Which we'll just get to in a little minute. Once I've got somebody's attention, I have to get their interest. So once they say, that's me, she can help me, or she can help somebody in my family, now you've got to give me a reason to keep reading, keep watching, keep listening. And the biggest part of interest is that you can do something for me, which is why this one came first. I'm going to lose interest pretty quickly if it's just your ripped abdominals. Does that make sense? I'm going to keep interest if I'm thinking this. Oh my God, they can help me. There's a reason for me to keep reading, to keep listening. <sighs> yes, <Yazzie. laughs> So now I have to have a desire to take action. Desire to take action. So you got my attention. I realise that you can help me, but why should I call you? Do you see why with them is so important? Why should I call you? Because you, you have a solution to my personal challenge. And there's one way you can do that that works, there's one way that works really well. Which one do you prefer? <laughs> <laughs> to create desire for me to call you, to take action, to call you, put an email response into your website, uh, send you a Facebook post, whatever. Who's going to sell your business better for you? You or your clients and customers that love you? So this really, I think, in my personal uh, inexperienced opinion, because I don't have a high school education, this could probably be T. Get people's attention, get their interest, interest provide them with a testimonial of people that love your business and that will then create desire for them to take action. Other people blowing your trumpet for you is really awesome. So I, I can't help myself, I've just got to put a couple of things in there because there's some people in this room that have to leave here today and take some action, you ready? <coughs> when I call you and I get a message back that says, leave a message and it shall be transferred into a Text. Have you seen what some of those texts say? Because <laughs> it's a machine. It actually can't produce what you said, especially when you use words like I do. So what comes out on that information is usually not what you said. <laughs> so when somebody actually calls you, and by the way, if somebody's calling you in this day and age, they really want to do business with you. If they actually call you, this is serious stuff. 
and this blows my mind how many times when somebody calls a business, because I call them every single day, I get one of those ridiculous messages where I don't even get to talk to a person and I don't even get to say what I want because it's going to be transferred into a text message. So could you please leave here today and make sure that your voicemail does this. What's in it for me to leave a message? Would that be fair? <laughs> Not one of those ridiculous things. You know, somebody said to me, oh, Rowie, but my phone company won't let me do it. Well, guess what? Change your freaking phone company and give people a reason to leave you a message. Now, there's three really powerful things. What do you think the first one is? You've called Ellis lawyers. They're the best lawyers on the Gold Coast because they get me out of the shit all the time. <laughs> Yes or no? <laughs> My name's John. Shane and Ebony are busy at the moment helping other people like me get out of the shit. <laughs> so you better leave a message and they'll call you back. The thing about the phone that people seem to forget is that it's meant to be real. It has to be you, it has to be real. Not some posh message that somebody else leaves. Now the next one that's really powerful is a child. Doesn't matter how angry you are, how stressed you are, how pressured you are, when you hear a child's voice, what happens? My dad is the best exercise professional in the world. He can't answer the phone at the moment because he's helping ladies slide into their jeans, not squish into them. So leave a message and my dad will call you back. What's, what's the universal law of marketing? There's a reason for me to go, by, okay, by, and the only reason I called today is because I didn't fit into my jeans. And now you're the person that can help me, and not only can you help me, but your son told me that you could help me. <laughs> See how awesome that is? Now, Shane, you'll probably have somebody like this. You'll have somebody, if you know somebody famous, that's the third one. Somebody who's in your target market who's got some kind of fame in that particular area. So, um, I'm just about to go to Sydney to spend some time with a rugby league player called Wayne Pierce. Now, if, you, if you're way younger than me, you probably won't know that who that is because he's over 60 now. Um, he's got a son who plays rugby league. But there are people who, if, if he, he was on your voicemail message, my name's Wayne Pierce, I'm a... Australian and New South Wales rugby league player, and I highly recommend that you train with Jason. He's one of the best exercise professionals on the planet, not just in Queensland, but on the planet. I strongly recommend that you leave a message and he calls you back. So, fine. Famous is good. Children, really good. <laughs> Testimonials, really good. Make sense? There has to be a reason for people to call you. Now, we've got AIDA. What does it stand for? Get people's <laughs> create. So people have desire to act. Now, tell them how. I'm in the process at the moment of building a house. So I have to talk to a lot of people about houses. How many businesses have I called? And I don't know how to contact them. You go to their website, you can't find where to put your thing in. Yeah. <laughs> and when you're a woman, that's... <laughs> John, like, doesn't know where to put his thing <laughs> So make sure that it's really clear. If you want people to call you, make your telephone number really big. If you want people to email, make your email number really big. Your email address really big. But make, people, make sure people know how that they can get in contact with you. Do you like that? Yes. All right. This one is a really big one. It so far is actually irrelevant if you haven't got this happening. So if you go back to what does this stand for? Sweet spot. Sweet spot. Which means I am doing what I'm love. Love, and I'm the yeah. best. And I'm okay. adding massive value to people's lives. Now here's a really important question though. Whose lives do you want to add value to? And a lot of an old um, in in our profession, this is really interesting because a lot of exercise professionals will say, I want to help everybody. It's actually not true. I'll give you a couple of examples. Do you want to train people at 3 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> yes or no? No. Look, he said no. <laughs> so already you're not going to help everybody because people that want to train at 3 o'clock in the morning aren't going to be, you're not going to want to train them. Would that be fair? What about people that have only got $5 a week to train? So how much money people have got is part of the target market, yes or no? Would that determine your target market, what time they want to do business with you and how much money they've got? Here's the next one. How about people that you like? Those of you involved in the Max family, we have a really strict application process for a reason. We want to invest time with people who 
fill a room like this and it's an exciting experience. I do not want to be filled in this room with people who are obsessed with their own abdominals. This is not what I'm about. So people that contact us and say, look, I don't need to, be, I don't need to learn anything, I just need a bit of paper, I've already got ripped abdominals and I can help everybody get ripped abdominals. And so we've got plenty of education providers that you'll be very happy with. It just isn't us. So the question is, who do you want to do business with? So what time of day do you want to do business? Is a great question. How much money do these people have? Can they fit into your, your, what you're going to be charging? Who do you want to hang out with? And you'll find out pretty quickly, won't you, Andrew? Because when you first start in business, what's the, what do you think the most important thing is? Getting clients. Getting clients and? That's how I've got to get some money. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do this properly and you do this properly, you might actually do this. So if you are, what's in it for me? Because who's got to say, oh my God, that's me. Your target market has to say that. So if your marketing is effective, then you'll actually attract the right market. And if you don't, do you have to do business with them? Because it's really hard to get rid of people once they're already there. If you've already built an app for them, and now they want you to keep helping them with their app, it's really hard to get rid of them, isn't it? <laughs> So would it be good, just as a, a tip, whether you're starting your business or you're already in business, to have an application process? We just want you to ask you a few simple questions to make sure that we're the right business for you and you're the right client for us. We want to make sure that we can provide you with the best possible service and that we, you will be the right person for us, which is your target market. Now another quick thing, I always share this with exercise professionals, if you don't know, start your business and once you've got 60 or 70 clients, there'll be a day where you go, it goes like this. Yay, I'm joining Mrs. Jones today. And you jump out of bed with energy, enthusiasm, and excitement because you got Mrs. Jones today because she stimulates you and excites you and you love training her. You look at your book for today and you're like, Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones. Oh, he's a whiner. He doesn't train very hard. I like him very much. So guess who your target market is? Not Mr. Jones. <laughs> So sometimes it's about getting as many clients as you need, but I'm, my suggestion, just from, a, just from a love what you do point of view, when you do this properly and this properly, this will work itself out. It's a universal law of marketing. Do you like that? You can't help everybody, can you, Jess? No. So, do you like men or women? Do you like old people, young people? Do you like people who are elite athletes or do you want to train people who want to lose weight? Do you want to train people who have got lots of money or people who have got no money? And you get to decide, isn't that the beautiful thing about business? You hear me say this all the time, choose your own hours, be your own boss, earn the amount of money that you want to earn. Does that sound good? Yes. yes. <sighs> and if you get all of this right, it's easy because you'll have a SVU four wheel drive to take you where? Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> all right, I'll just start speaking a bit faster because we're only up to you. With them, a, a target market. Yes, got it? Universal law of marketing. Now we're going to look at vocabulary. It's a big word for words. <laughs> And again, I'm not sure of the disconnect on this. Harry, it's all right for you to be disconnected because you might not have heard this before. <laughs> the biggest part of your vocabulary in your own business is who are you? And I was so privileged. I was, I think, in fact, I was just about 18. Because when I applied for a position, my first position in the golf club, I was just about 18. They wanted somebody over 30 with experience, and I was almost 18. <laughs> and I had no experience, but I applied anyway. I got sent to a uh, management and leadership course at the Hilton Hotel in Sydney, which is one of the reasons why I like the Hilton Hotel chain, because it changed my life this day. The question asked on that day was, who are you? And use five words to describe yourself as a person. What do you want your reputation to be? If people are talking about you, what words do you want them to use? Now, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, because most of you have heard it, but those of you that haven't, this is how powerful this is. It's who you are. Now, your business and who you are, what if they're the same thing? Shouldn't they be? Most people do their job five days and they do their other thing two days. Now, I didn't do maths at school, but is that good life balance? Five days hating what you're doing in two days, and most people, they're getting drunk tonight, so they feel sick for half of tomorrow. So, super day they get drunk again. Sparkle day Sunday, they're feeling sick all morning, and then by the afternoon they're feeling sick because they're going to go to work the next day. Is that life? 
So if you want this to work effectively, you have to work out who you are and then go and do who you are. Please write that down. I do who I am. And who I am is what I do. Which is, by the way, exactly another definition of the sweet spot. Does that make sense? So five words to describe who you are. Now, my, that was easy for me. And those of you that have done it, should just quickly down to the, 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 the ability now to remind yourself of who you are. Just quickly write down the five words to describe who you are. I'm a bit of an extra mild person. Mine was tough and fair, positive, stylish, disciplined, professional. And I connected them to the fingers on my hands. Tough and fair because I'm an extra mild person, so I've got two words on one finger. Tough and fair, positive, stylish, disciplined, and professional. I was 18 years of age, I was about to start managing a health club. And those words just rolled off my tongue. That's exactly the person I wanted my members at my health club to describe me as a person. There's no challenge with that at all. Second part of the exercise, those of you that have heard this, this is not comfortable. Let's just say right now somebody's got, what would be, I'm going to use you at the top end for the lawyer. Somebody who's going to do a venture capitalist something with you mm -hmm. to buy into your business. Would 10 million do it? Nice start. Okay. 15, 20, we'll go to 20 because we said it was a start. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to invest $20 million into Shane's business. They want to, they want to be part of what he does, he's passionate about what he does. They want to put 20 million there. And he has described himself, I'll just use my words, as a tough and fair, positive, stylish, disciplined, professional person. The person who wants to put 20 mil in there, though, has just said, okay, that's how he's described himself. Let's just make sure that he is that. So we're going to send the Queensland Police Detectives Forensic Team into Shane's life. And let's see if he actually is tough and fair, positive, stylish, disciplined, professional. I'll take this off here because it might be open door. I'll do it for me. Somebody wants to invest in me as a, as a businesswoman at 18 years of age, and I've told them that I'm tough and fair, positive, stylish, disciplined, and professional. They're now going to go and look into my life when I'm not there. So we're all sitting here on Sunday, Friday evening, and they're now going to go to your house right now, come to my house right now, and have a look at my life when I'm not there. Just because somebody wants to invest $20 million into my business, they just want to make sure that I'm the real deal. The person investing into or investigating my life, looking into my life, has never met me before. Because I'm sitting here. They're going in up to my hotel room in my house to have a look at my life. So they're going to go to the front of my house, they're going to have a look at my garden, they're going to have a look at my letterbox, they're going to have a look at the outside of my house. They're going to go inside my house. Please do this for yourself. They're going to go inside your house. They're going to go into the kitchen and have a look at the third drawer in the kitchen. They're going to have a look at your toothbrush. So the shaggy toothbrush is in good condition. They're going to have a look at the sheets on your bed. They're going to have a look at the deodorant and moisturiser that you use. They're going to have a look at the condition of your shoes. They're going to open up your undie drawer and have a look if you've got sexy undies in there or daggy old ones that have got rips and tears in them. They're going to have a look at the last 50 websites, 500 websites that you visited. They're going to have a look at your bank account, your music collection, your library. And they're going to come up with five words to describe you as a person to share with a person who's going to put $20 million into your business. The words that you use to describe you as a person, and mine are tough and fair, positive, stylish, disciplined, professional, I don't know what yours are, and if you haven't got some, it's a good time to start developing who you are as a person. The words you're going to use, the vocabulary that you're going to use to describe you as a person, if you want people to invest into your business, who are they going to find there? Who you are is what you do, and what you do is who you are. Does that make sense? Uh, we talked a little bit at the start, and Mervyn and I today and came in about mental health. Very uncomfortable to live a life when you're pretending to be somebody and you're, the whole world thinks that you're this person, and actually if they look in the third drawer of your kitchen or the last 500 websites that you visited, I'll have to tell you this is so funny. I was in the bra section today at the department store, there was a guy wandering around in there and looking at bras and undies. And there's lots of reasons why that would happen, isn't there? There's this end of the scale where he wants to buy gorgeous underwear for his partner. Or well, there's this end of the scale where he wants to wear them himself. Yes or no? You've got no clue though, have you? And I, I use that as an example because I had a giggle to myself today. Because people do that, you all do it, we all do it, about everybody. I wonder who they really are. Is this the coolest husband ever who wants to buy really sexy undies for his wife? Or is this the guy that likes to wear 
women's underwear. Not that that's right or wrong. But it's a different headspace, isn't it? So many people live uncomfortably because who they are to the world isn't who they really are. Now, if you're living your life who you really are, the words that you use to describe yourself on your CV, on your resume, on the proposal that you give to your clients, and I use the example of $20 million into your business. But those of you who are in business, if you added up all the clients in your business over the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years, you'd probably get much more than $20 million. And why would people invest money in you if who you are and what you say who you are are not the same thing? Are you with me? Yeah. I don't understand the disconnect here. Decide who you're going to be. Now, today could be the day. Today you could go home from here and go, okay, I'm going to be this, 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 this and this. And just be that person and love it. I don't know how you guys went, but I was very uncomfortable the first time I did that because tough and fair, positive, stylish, disciplined and professional was not who I was. If you went to my fridge that day, you would have found some rotten bananas and some green cordial. If the Queensland police went through my house that day, would they have found a tough and fair, positive, stylish, just a professional woman in there? Rotten bananas and green cordial, please say no. <laughs> and I use lots of examples. If somebody goes to your house at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and your bed's not made, is there a disciplined person living there? No one's going to say that. And I'm asking you that because when you market yourself, whether you work for someone else or not, it's you. And the question is, who are you? Now, the really easy way, when we do this one-on-one, because -on -one, everything we're going to do that we're going through tonight, I'm asking you, please, if you really want your business to grow, have a one-on-one -on -one session with me on this, because it's just, it's about your business then. And the first question I'll ask you is, who are you? Then be that person, and then you market your business that way. So if you're ex uh, exciting and fun and uh, extrovert, and your business card is black and white, not representative of your business, would that be fair? So the vocabulary, vocabulary that you use has to be who you actually are. Because otherwise your marketing comes across as cow poo. Which is the really cool way of saying bullshit. <laughs> and if you are cow poo in your world, it's very difficult to market your business. Because, and haven't you ever felt that? People talk about what their business is all about, and then you go, oh yeah, yeah, really? But when you're living who you are, it's really easy. Now, the reverse of that, if you're living who you are and you respect who you are and you really like who you are, if other people don't, do you care? No. Because they're not going to be part of your... When you, every single one of you, when you heard from me from the first time, the very first time, I, on your email, it says, happy hello there and happy magical day, terrific day, wow day, thankful day, fun day, super day, or sparkle day. And there are people who don't want to come to Max because who are those over-the-top positive people? It's just ridiculous, some kind of a cult. <laughs> if you don't like happy day, terrific day, sparkle day, you are not going to be very happy at, Mar at Max and you won't be part of their target market. You with me? Be who you are, represent who you are, be proud of who you are. And if people don't want to do business with you, that's awesome because who will want to do business with you? Because so many people say to me, oh, Rowie, it's so cool not to hear Monday on Monday. Which means we're a lot closer to the target market. Which is all about what? Vocabulary. Awesome. Okay, so now we're going to do a bit of uh, brainstorming on your own with the person next to you, which is why you couldn't sit next to the person in your business. Four. USPs. Universal laws of marketing, but I'll snap them in over here. USP is a unique selling point, and the POD is a point of difference. Once again, I cannot understand how many people go to a university to do a marketing degree and have no clue what either of those mean. I'm going to use, and those of you who aren't in the fitness profession will still probably get this very interesting analogy. What is the difference between Jets, Snap, Anytime, and 24 hour fitness? What's the difference? Just the name. <laughs> Name, logo, uniforms, signage, oh. colours. <laughs> What's the difference? This is a challenge because it means that you'll probably go to one closest to you. But guess what? Someone out on every corner, one of each. <laughs> if you don't have unique selling points, you can't sell your business. 
Now, there's a unique difference between the two, and this is really important. The key is to this here. Unique selling point is what you sell to everybody else. It's what you tell people about your business. USP. Point of difference is what other people say about your business. So, Andrew, and that's why I left you to last one on purpose. Andrew cannot stand up and tell everybody how awesome he is at making apps. He would sound like a dick. Yes, or no. So he can't do that. It's not a selling point. I'm awesome at apps. But guess who did it for him? His point of difference from every... Because I've looked at research. We did so much research on apps because we really need our students if we want to have an app. And we did so much research on it. And Andrew was the only person that spoke English, not geek. <laughs> and he's so patient with me that in his marketing. We'll be so patient with you if you're an IT idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but I can say that. So let's go back here. Why are testimonials so important? That's your point of difference. And I use again that in, in the personal training maps family, a lot of people have people's favourite music and they have a fluffy white towel and that's a 30 minute session. Which by the way is not unique anymore because there's other people that do that. But you can't put that stuff on your marketing. You can't say to people we're going to have your music playing have a fluffy white towel and we're going to arrive on time. But if you're at a barbecue and your business is doing all of those things, you're at a social event, you're at the bar downstairs, nobody's ever been to your business before and they've had crappy experiences at personal training studios and they say to their mates, I've just been to this personal training studio and had my music playing, they had a fluffy white towel with my name on it, they arrived on time and the guy didn't smell. Because they had a bad experience another time with a smelly personal trainer, yeah? Now you can't put on your marketing and you're not going to smell. That is not a selling point. <laughs> But it could be a point of difference. Do you see the difference? So what you have to do now, and you don't have to have four, but for the sake of my analogy tonight, you have to have four. With the person next to you, and we, this is really important, four things about your business that other people do your business, but you do uniquely different to any other business. Nobody else does what you do. Go. Two, 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 two. This is a really interesting question. It's one of the things that really pulls most businesses up. And Shane and I just is a very cool guy. We've just had a very good conversation about what a USP actually is and what a point of difference is. Now, at Ellis Lawyers, they promise peace of mind. Nice, yeah? But is it a USP? To do our slogan? Well, no one's gonna say, we don't give you peace of mind. So this is what, what I want you to do with your USPs. And remember, we're gonna do this one-on-one. -on -one. This is not a group thing. We're just having a bit of a discussion about it tonight, but in your business, do this one-on-one -on -one with me. So I'm pretty harsh on this one for a reason. Because I've screwed up more times in business than you'll ever screw up in your whole life. Because I didn't know any of this stuff. I had to learn it the hard way. And I didn't know what this even meant. So what the, if I go to a party or a social event, and I say, I've just been to a lawyer, and I feel like I've got real peace of mind that I went to that lawyer, that's a point of difference. Because most people wouldn't say that about their lawyer. Yeah? But where did the peace of mind come from? And Ellis lawyers have two very powerful uh, USPs, which I'm strongly suggesting you stick on all of your, your brochures and your advertising. Are you ready for this? They are lawyers, and they have a money back guarantee, or we fix it for free. We have a money back guarantee, and we, if we make a mistake, we fix it for free. Wouldn't you like to know that about your lawyer? I would. <laughs> and that. You can advertise. If, you, if you're solid on that, you can actually advertise that. Now, people will still talk about it for sure, but their current slogan, which is, Rose, you said it beautifully, is that they give you peace of mind. But where does the peace of mind come from? Hey, it's a money back guarantee. And I'm, and I'm asking you, I'm so glad it came up, because it doesn't matter what business you, that you're in, why wouldn't you do a money back guarantee? What's the only reason that you wouldn't promise a full money back guarantee? <laughs> Say it out loud. Because you, you know you suck. Because you know you suck. <laughs> if you passionately
passionately believe in your business, this is why a sweet spot is so important. If you're really passionate about what you do, you want to be the best in the world at massive value of people's lives, you're going to give them money back guarantee, aren't you? Come on! If you're really good at what you do, you're going to give a money back guarantee. It's the ultimate USP, and guess what most businesses will never even consider doing? Can I share an anecdote? Please. It's, um, one of the things that um, the business still does is cottage conveyancing a lot of people because we've always done it before. I what is that, buy, please? Uh, buying some properties for people and making sure that the settlement goes through and protects your house or you know what it may be. Um, and it was many Christmases ago, we were getting fairly close to Christmas on the Gold Coast, and you can imagine how hard it is to get rental accommodation on the Gold Coast at that point in time. Um, one of my staff members stuffed up, and we actually settled the sale of the property, but the purchase didn't go through. So that means they're out of a house or unit before Christmas when you can't get rental properties, and they're not moving into their one on the same day or fairly much that time. Um, in addition to that, um, the difficulty came up is that they had a cat that needed to be cared for as well. And again, you know, rental accommodation with a cat of all things, and that's not the easiest thing to do, right? So because of the fact that the stuff ups took place and because of what we actually do, um, we put them into rental accommodation, which was holiday rental accommodation, which was you know, pick a number five times, ten times, whatever it may have been, and that's just for general accommodation. In addition to that, the cat died during the period of time that it was away from mum and dad in the, um, the category. So we went out of our way to make sure that the cat was properly cremated and provided for in the ashes and things like that as well, as well as providing the accommodation, which I think was about for about two weeks we were able to get them into actually their property. Um, so that cost me many times more than what it was in a monetary way with what took place. Um, but I've still got an anecdote that I share around the country when I'm speaking at times about kitty carking it. So, um, yeah, from a, a marketing perspective, and that is you know, many fold, hundred fold times, whatever it, it may be in relation to a monetary side of things. Thank you. So, so you know, what a beautiful example of everything. We've just thank you so much. First of all, you can't sell that. You can't put that in your marketing. You can't put the cat story in your marketing. <laughs> <laughs> but people will talk about it, yes or no? Yeah. Peace of mind, that's a given that that's going to happen. But we don't know that. You can't put that in your marketing. What you can put in your marketing is that we have a full money back guarantee. Or if we make a mistake, we fix it. And one of the most beautiful points of difference, you from other businesses, is the way you fix your mistakes, which is just awesome. Are you with me? Now, we don't want to spend too much time on that because this, these two are really important. And I'm anywhere between one, you really only need one point of difference, but one is, and as many as you can have is awesome. The biggest one is a full money back guarantee, or we'll train you for free. At the moment, the only people that I know in Australia that are doing that Australia and New Zealand is Vision Personal Training. They offer a money back guarantee. If you don't lose the weight in a certain period of time, we'll train you until you do. And they actually use that as a, as a major selling point. So I'm asking you to please come up with something that's unique to everybody else and the number that I'm challenging with is four and if you come back to me and you've got one really good one which is a, a money back to guarantee is a really good one. Now if two people in your town, two, two personal trainers and exercise professionals in Emerald have four money back guarantee, guess what you can't use as a USP anymore? Because if somebody else is doing it, it's not unique. The big part of this is it's unique so nobody else is doing it and selling point is what you can sell in your marketing. You with me? Now, if you don't get it, that's all good, because guess what Max is all about? This is all about one-on-one, -on -one, so we're going to do this together and work it out together. Your point of difference is the stuff that people talk about, that you actually have no, no control over whatsoever. But when you want to provide a wow customer service to your target market, what are you going to ask them? What's going to make you say, wow? And if people are saying, wow, guess what is already covered? It's really easy. Okay, are you excited yet? Yes. We are up to W. I'll give you a clue. How do you get people to say wow? If people are walking away from your business and they're saying wow, every single time they say wow, will you need to market your business? Will you need a referral program? 
Those of you that listen to Max Bites, this is my absolute bugbear about referral programs. Do you need to have a referral program in your business? Would it be really good if all of your business was coming from your current customers and clients telling people how wow you are? Would that be great? Yeah? So how do you find out what makes people say wow? Ask. Here's my real challenge with referral systems. If you refer somebody to our business, we will give you $10 off your next personal training session. Right. <laughs> if you refer somebody to our business, we'll take 50% off your next bill. If you refer somebody to our business, we'll send you on holidays. It's nice, but here's a great question. Do you want people in your business that you can bribe? Or do you want people in your business that are so excited about your business that they're automatically telling people how awesome you are? Now, there's a difference. When people tell people, other people, how wow your business is, what do you need to do? You have to say thank you. And that's the really interesting thing. It's something that came in and I really, I'm, I'm just, for me it's the most important thing. If somebody says you should go and study with Max, before I even contact the person who wants to study with Max, I thank the person that sent because that's just such a special thing for somebody to do. There's so many businesses that people could recommend. If somebody's recommending somebody to your business, what's the very first thing you should do? You have to say thank you. It seems like two words it's forgotten. In this, it seems like in a, we live in a world now where thank you just, just kind of irrelevant. So please make sure that rather than, and I'm not telling you what to do, please, it's not about telling you what to do in your business, but a lot of marketing plans will have a referral system where it's a bribe. If you do this, this, and this, we'll give you this. So people run around, you should do, and don't you feel a little bit cheated if somebody recommends a business to you and you found out that they got a $100 gift voucher because they recommended the business to you? It's like, well, is it really a great business or did you just recommend it because you got a $100 voucher? And they work, I promise. You can do a bribe system and it'll work, but in the back of a, a few people's head space, depending on who your target market is, there's going to be a challenge with that. Make sense? So all I'm asking you to do with this one, this is really easy. Ask people, and this is such a simple question. I'm going to use you today, Mitch. You're calling a school. You talk to a I did, I do because this is what I do with teachers. Andrew's been there when he's actually heard me say it. You brought today a group of school students, year nines, and you brought 40, 50 students to this event today. What do we need to do for you to walk away from here today saying, not only invested a, the right amount of money, but you've got twice the value. I'm going to say that again. What do we need to do to make you feel like you've got twice the value of our, of our product or service today? So many of you have heard this example we're going to use to get everybody sent up as well. I'm racing, I promise, because we've got a very short period of time. You might get set, go. Brain drive neurotopic factors, go! Say to yourself, brain drive neurotopic factors, brain drive neurotopic factors, brain drive neurotopic factors, I have a monkey, brain drive neurotopic factors through my brain. Yes! <laughs> How long does that take, by the way? 11 seconds. Thank you very much. For me, it's 11, you might be 10. 13. <laughs> Just think of the fellow called Usain Walk. What's his name? How long does he bolt for? <laughs> Not 11, 9, closer to 9, much, much closer to 9. So, you go to a new bank in Brisbane. You ready? I don't care if you're not from Brisbane, you could be from Emerald, but there's a new bank in Brisbane, okay? And if you go to the bank and you give them $100, they say, come back in half an hour and your return on investment will be 100%. So we're going to, you put $100 in here, when you come back in half an hour, we're going to invest your money, your $100 for half an hour, and we're going to give you $200 back. Good bank? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> You're all very hesitant on saying wow because it might not be. It actually sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? So let's just say you've got to spare 100 So you go and you give them the 100 and you come back half an hour later and they give you 200 back. Thank you for doing business with us. Wow. Mm -hmm. Woo! Yeah, well, that's pretty good. All right, so you give him another hundred. You go, all right, I've got 200, now here's another hundred. So, all right, cool, come back in half an hour, and you, they give you another hundred back. How are you going? Now you've got a few, the more, you go, all right, take all of them. So you give them four, come back, they give you eight back. How's the business? All right, this is my favourite analogy, though. 
So it's raining. And they say, if you can only do this once a week though, it's raining, it's your time to go to the bank. Do you still go? Yeah. But it's raining. You're from Palmerston North, it's cold. Do you still go? You give them 100, they keep it for half an hour, give you 200 back, do you still go? Even if it's cold, really? What if you're tired? Do you still go? What if you don't feel like it, do you still go? This is my favourite question for all the blokes in the room. I don't know how the women answer this, but the blokes is a really cool answer. You're in bed with your favourite person. And your favourite person says to you, don't go to the bank today, stay in bed and make love to me. What do you do? <laughs> you actually don't. Think, no, I'll actually think this one for me. What do you actually do? I'll give you a clue.
And when would be a really good idea to ask your current customers or potential customers and clients what would make them say, wow. Yeah, so discipline is what we should know, what we should do, and when we should do it. Mm -hmm. Third part of discipline, more interesting though, even if you don't feel like it. The world is not actually, the world has got two thirds of discipline completely sorted. Because we all know what we should do, don't we? I really should get up and exercise in the morning. Mm -hmm. yes. So when? I know that I should, and when should I do it? I promised myself when? Oh, but I'm tired. I had a bad dream. I've got a headache. I've got a sore foot. I don't. We all say most people don't do it. Exactly the same with marketing, because you, most of you have heard most of this stuff. There's a few of you that haven't, and that's okay, but most of you have heard all of this stuff before. It's the actual application of this is really interesting. And I'll give you some classic examples. Is it important at the moment in this current social media frenzy to be active on social media? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So how many of you have seen somebody post and they say, I'm going to do blah every day. You get a motivational quote from me every day, you're going to see me put up a recipe every day, you're going to hear from me every day. And how many days do you hear from them? I have, had, I have Max Jim, she's had me on a row, it's too hard. Every day. You know that you should, <laughs> and you know when, which is every day, but I don't feel like it anymore. It's too hard. How many people say, I'm going to compete in a bodybuilding competition, I'm going to run a marathon, I'm going to gun, 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 gun. And they put it all up on social media and they tell everybody what they're going to do, and they just don't do it. So I'm not a fan, and those of most of you know me, Andrew and Pia know me better than anybody on this one. I don't do Facebook for a reason, but I have a complete understanding of the power of Facebook. How often does Max post on Facebook? Three, four, five times a day. Because it's the discipline of doing it. So there's a discipline involved in every single one of these. Serious discipline. We've all decided together, and nobody said, no, Robbie, I think that's a terrible idea. Oh, I really shouldn't live in my sweet spot. I really should have a shit life. Nobody said that. We've all decided that it's a good thing to do, and we all know when we should do it, but this is the big one, isn't it? Every single day. Now, how do you get disciplined? Oh, is that the trillion dollar question? Well, I'm going to wrap tonight up really easily. How do you get the discipline to post on social media every day? How do you get the discipline to exercise every day? How do you get the discipline to eat healthy food every day? How do you get the discipline to tell your partner that you love them every day? How do you have the discipline to do all the things you're supposed to do every single day? Make it a habit. It's a habit. Harry, I love you. Once it's a habit, it's really easy. Now, this is the thing about exercise, and I'll have my little preach and then we'll finish up the evening. Those of you that are parents, when do we start teaching our kids to brush their teeth? You've got kids? Yeah, as soon as they've got? And what happens if you don't brush your teeth? <laughs> and if that's true, if you don't brush your teeth, they'll run away. If you don't brush your teeth, you have bad breath. If you don't have brush your teeth, you'll have poor mouth hygiene or something. But what's the actual reason that we brush our teeth? Smile. Possibly. I'll ask you a different question. When you wake up in the morning and you've got morning memories, what do you want to do? Yeah, so. <laughs> and how does it make you feel after you brush your teeth? Good. If you haven't brushed your teeth for a few days, you shouldn't know the answer to this. <laughs> but if you haven't brushed your teeth for a few days, how do you feel? Yeah. Imagine how you would feel. And that's the thing about this thing called exercise. If you do it every day, how do you feel? When something becomes a habit, and I'm, I, ha I always use teeth as the example, we teach our kids to brush their teeth as soon as they've got teeth. Why don't we teach them the importance of exercise, even the importance of this stuff from day one? I'm sure that the parents in this room do. But why not brush your teeth and sprint at the same time? We have so many kids that don't do any exercise. We have so many adults that don't do any exercise. What I'm asking us as human beings is that to get into the habit of anything is as simple as we did it with our teeth, didn't we? 
And none of us are out of the habit. How many of you say, oh, I don't feel like brushing teeth today, I'll leave in a few days? That's raining, I won't bother. It's cold, couldn't be bothered. <laughs> We're all in the habit of brushing our teeth, yeah? Because we learnt it and we did it, and now it just becomes a habit. How about eating? How many of you go a few, few four or five days without eating food? <laughs> we all eat, we're in the habit of it. How about showering? You do that on a regular basis? We all get into the habit. Thank you, Harry, it's the best word. And discipline and habit are pretty close together, yes or no? Yes. So if you get into the discipline, of the, or the habit of being disciplined, and I'm just gonna give you the example of that. If you picked, and you've all heard this before, and I just Harry, you only met me twice, so you know that. If you picked three, four, five things, Marissa, which you and I talk about on a regular basis, that you promise yourself you're going to do every day. Easy things that you would never miss. So I'm going to, I'm going to use the, word, the, the, the five magic numbers because you can put it on your hand. If you pick five things that you're going to do every single day and not miss, now I'll just give you a couple of examples. And when I heard this for the first time, for me, they were, it was things that, it, it's got to be things that you, if it's three o'clock in the morning and you're really tired, you can still do them. Because they're not hard, yeah? So I use one example is to learn a new word every day. And there was lots of reasons for that, because there's lots of words that you don't know the, the meaning of. So I just set a, a habit goal to learn a new word every day. Now, just how long does it take? So easy now that the computer will actually spit it into your, into your, money frame on a regular basis. Uh, is it easy? If you learn a new word every set, new word every day, up to seven days, how many new words have you learned? Seven after a year, 365 days, and you get smarter. If even a psychologist will tell you actually, your brain opens up because you're learning more stuff. If you did 10, ten seconds of sprinting three or four, four or five times a day, what will you do? Pump have a dose of your brain, grow your brain. Is it easy? to get puffed 10 times, five times, three times a day, yes or no, 30 seconds of exercise, yes or no? Yeah, easy, yeah? If you do it for seven days, how do you feel? Three times a day, you pump happy drugs through your brain. What about, and this is controversial, but I don't know what it is that you eat, whatever you think is a healthy food, what if you ate just at least one serving of that healthy food every single day, never missed? Now there's all these different ideas of what healthy food is, but whatever you think a healthy food is, you go seven days without, Missing one day of healthy food. So I've got three things now. What about if you've got a partner or a child or somebody important in your life and you tell them every day that you love them? Those of you in relationships, if you tell the person that you really love every single day without missing, I love you, how's your relationship going to go? Do you know what some blokes say to me? Well, my wife thinks I'm doing a play up or something because I've never told her before. Oh, good time to start, mate. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> what about um, now talking to the mums and the women in the room who we often say, I do everything for everybody else, but I don't do anything for me. I never look after myself. So my really funny one was I was going to do something for myself every day. So whether it was paint my nails or pluck on my brows or read half a page of the, of the book or something, but personally for me, it came in a handy giggle once because I was 3 o'clock in the morning and I'm painting my thing and I was you know, it's 3 o'clock in the morning, don't you? Yeah, but I hadn't done that thing for me today, so I had to do it because it was my habit-forming process. I'm going to finish on this. Five things, seven days a week. How do you feel at the end of seven days? You've done them all. Learned a word, ate one piece of vegetable, painted your nails. How do you feel? You've made a promise to yourself, seven days, and you've done it. How do you feel? After you've done something and you feel good about it, how, what do you want to do? Oh, yeah. So I might do a month this time, I'm going to do 31 days non-stop, not miss. How do you feel after 31 days? Now all those things are going to make you feel good. If you sprint and brush your teeth and eat vegetables and whatever, you're going to feel good anyway. But the actual habit of doing them, yeah? If you could do a month, could you do two months? Yeah. Okay, so, and you most of you have heard this, but this is really interesting for me. I decided that I would run every day for a year not miss. Because we all talk about exercising. And I'm like, every day thinking I'm not miss. That first year, I missed one or two days, I can't remember, but I remember having to, in my diary, there wasn't 365 days, it was like 363 or something like that. How does that feel? Shit. It feels shit. And sometimes that 
that's good because when you hit rock bottom, sometimes that's the reason why you never want to feel that way again. So then came the 10 years. I want you to imagine what it was like. It was a, we were living at Nixon Road in, in uh, Auckland. I touched the house on the 31st of December and I hadn't missed a day of running for 10 years. How do you think that felt? Ooh. Now, that's just called a habit and I'm sharing that with you because over that 10 year period, guess what else happened in every other area of my life? Because when you do what you should do, when you should do it, even if you don't feel like it. And there were times when I was travelling or I had a sore foot or I couldn't be bothered or I was tired or I was shrinking in the morning, but I never missed. How does it make you feel? Amazing. All of this stuff only works with this on the end. If you want a SUV four-wheel drive to take you everywhere, which I believe is your business. If you're doing what you're absolutely passionate about, you're the best in the world at it, you're getting paid to do it because you're adding massive value to people's lives, you choose your own hours, be your own boss, add massive value to people's lives, how's your life? And you've got an SUV four-wheel drive to take you there, how good's that? After today, if any of these are a question, if you have a challenge, you're interested in exploring further, uh, I'm, this is not my genius, this is just my absolute passion on how to make sure that your business is successful so you attract as many clients as you need and you have the career that you want or the business that you're excited about. Thanks for coming tonight. Make sure you meet everybody before you go. And thank you very, very, very much for being here. Thank you.